G'day, Marco and Ox. Matt from Churnside Park. Love hearing you guys back on the airwaves again. Hope you're enjoying a few cold beers. Take it easy. Seb Costello's got a few issues. Hang on. Let me just start. Hang on, why? What do you got on with... Last week... I was prepared to give Seb Costello from Channel 9. He does a great job and a good bloke. He's, got a, he's really got a good voice, Seb's mm-hmm. voice. It's very, very good. It's easy to listen to. We heard it on the voicemail. Correct. When he didn't he, take When he call. didn't take my call. That is right. So, you know what I did? I followed up with a picture of my front lawn, you know, the little strip. We're it's talking, we're two metres about, long. We're talking about one of the biggest stories of all time here. And my next-door neighbour only mowed half yeah. of that tiny little strip. And did only half the edges. That's right. I was shocked. I was taken aback. And to be honest with you, I felt disrespected. And I think a lot of people in my street did it as well. Because I've shown everybody that picture. Well, I think what's happened is he's chasing a monster. <laughs> he's chasing a monster. No, no, no. Seb didn't get back to me at all. He might be overseas. No, no. There, there'll be a reason for it. Mate. I think he's trying. He could be undercover right he's, now. I think he's fobbing me off. He could be undercover right now chasing a uh, crime syndicate. Can I tell you this? What? Mark, can we get you on to talk about Live Golf? Yeah, no worries, Seb. Mark, can we get you on to talk about Kingston Heath hosting he, the President's Cup? Yeah, no worries. Mark, can we get you on to talk about this, that, that? Hey, yeah, hey, no worries. He, I am calling for one thing. He could be Donnie Brasco right now. He well, could be Donnie Bras- Brasco. What does he that could mean? Undercover oh. doing, doing a job. I'm telling you, mate. Oh, Seb yeah. blends in. He's a chameleon. <laughs> who, who the hell's Donnie Brasco? Are you serious? It's a movie. Oh, right. Donnie Brasco infiltrated the mafia and was the guy that brought down... Okay. Huh? Yeah. Your oh. ignorance has no limits. <laughs> um, <laughs> has, has no limits. Has no anyway, limits. Anyway. Hang on. Hey. I'm very upset with Seb. Well, the one thing I do know, he's not at the Emerald Hotel in Clarendon Street, South Melbourne, where we are right now. How good is this, Joy? Mate, we've got the best table... This is, and was doing the show a little bit earlier than normal. So to have a pot yeah. before midday. Yeah, and a nice. shandy. And a shandy before actually, you go this, easy this, too. This is actually more like a lemonade with a little bit of beer in it <laughs> yeah. today. You just go easy. My God. You go easy. But this is uh, one, this is an institution, this pub. So great to hear it. history anymore. dripping off the walls? Oh, yeah. A lot of Collingwood nice? history. Yeah, and, and South and Melbourne history. And Big V yeah. history, the Big uh, V. Good to, great to be here. Great yeah. to be here. So, um, and, and you, You've ordered lunch. What did you go with? Oh, of course, the Silver Side. They are, why are they so famous for the Silver Side? I don't know. Surf Do you here? like Silver Side? No. No, I've just gone to steak, what? which I've been told are very, very good. How can you not like Silver Side? That is like the... No. Corn beef, like that is the best meal. It, and, he, and they do it here with uh, the most unbelievable mash. Oh. Do you know why? Oh. Do you know why I will never order Silverside? Uh. It sounds like a disease you catch in hospital. <laughs> Silverside. He's got a case. Oh of, yeah, you walk out. Oh, you walk out with silver, have, silver have, down your side. Have a look at Ox over there. Have a look at the case of Silverside <laughs> that poor bastard's got. Oh, I tell you, it is one of the one of the great I'm, meals. I'm not eating a disease. Hey, End talk, of story. Talking about food, I did see the other day though. What? Um, there's been a new invention, Marco. Oh, the donut flavoured twisties. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah, are you still on your twisties? You're not allowed to eat twisties. You've, I've, got, I've you've, got an update. You've, you've been eating twisties? I've got an update on Come the twisties. On. Come on. Is it possible? Actually, just explain the new twisties, can you? Well, we know there is chicken twisties, yeah. and we know there are cheese, cheese twisties, yep, and yeah. we know there are bacon and cheese twisties, which and, is an old yep. one. But now, for the first time ever, they are donut flavoured twisties. Where are we? That is unbelievable. So is it like a chocolate donut or a strawberry donut or is it just one of those icing sugar no, donuts? No. Either way, either way, I think it's an interesting thing, but I've got an update on <laughs> my... That is it's, just, it is very interesting. <laughs> I've got an update. Yeah, because on. I've had so many twisties after we had that, you know, I went, I went yeah. completely clean. Yeah. I abstained. Yeah. Also known as abstinence. So I, I abstained <laughs> thank from thank having, having twisties. You linguist. Well, guess what? What? I went back on them. And? And I went ballistic. Oof. Like I was having packs a day, all right? <laughs> yes. But I've OD'd on them. <laughs> You've OD'd on I've them. O- so I haven't had twisties now for nearly two or three weeks because I had so many of them, they make – I can't even look at the bloody things anymore. So you, what you've done – to twisties is what they used to do to kids who used to pa- smoke cigarettes behind the shelter sheds. M- Grandma used to caught 
yep. th- their daughter or son, yep. and then they would just give them three packs and they say, stay you, in this little you room. smoke and, every one of those cigarettes until they're all gone. And don't come out. And then you never want to do them again. <laughs> I'm the same with Twisties. I don't want to eat Twisties ever again. You go chicken or... Cheese. Doesn't matter. I'm not eating twisties again. But which ones did you go with? Oh, oh no. I, or did you go everything? Ah, cheese. Did you? Cheese. And, and the problem was I had, took... I Show got me your a, hands. I got have, home, you got, have you got the I, yellow no, crap no, off no, your no. hands yet? I, I got home late what at night. What about downstairs? No, 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 no. They're okay. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. But I, got, I did get home late one night yeah. and there was a party pack in the cupboard and I was, and I was drunk. Right? Oh. So... Well, you're at your weakest. So I go into the kitchen... Get the twisties out, jump into bed, yes. and start eating the twisties. Right. Anyway, I wake up in the morning <laughs> yeah, and I look like an Oompa Loompa. I've just got this mental picture of you <laughs> in your little gym jams yeah, no. with a couple of pillows up behind your back. Well, I woke up and a big party size bag of twisties. I woke you just up, hook it in. I woke up. I was a, I was, I was a cross between an Oompa Loompa and Donald Trump. <laughs> I, woke, I woke up orange. There was twisties from asshole. To <laughs> Oh. They were everywhere. Oh, I'm not, my I'm God. not joking. I, you know, you wake up. Right? I got up and I was kind of half to- dozy. I'll go to the toilet, have a wee. I look in the mirror and there it is. Like I'm just, and I look back in the bed and I thought, oh my God, mate. You might, is... have to, you might have to admit yourself into your own clinic. No, my that, have. No, that was it. That was it. So from that point on, I haven't had a twisty again. Uh, okay. Well, so have a think about this. I mean, you see a lot of different people coming into your my have. <laughs> yeah, no one for twisty addiction. <laughs> yeah, I know that. <laughs> no one. But could you use the smoking three packs a day theory that you have OD'd on with the twisties with some of the other, you know, <laughs> cases yeah. that you see wandering in. Oh, come on. Well, the, I did have another mate. I did have another mate, um, Slats, and I won't, I won't go into his full name, but he loved oysters. Michael Slater. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> yes. no, no. Christian? He's, he's got his own. Christian Slater? He, he's got his, <laughs> close to the Christian, <laughs> further away from the mine. Right. Okay. Okay. So he had an oyster, he loved oysters. Right. Like, oysters are his number one thing. Right. So he heads over to Beach, uh, Beachport or Robe, in uh, down on in South Australia, are they famous for their oysters? Yeah, you can get beautiful oysters over there. So he goes he goes down the dock, and they were selling them for twelve bucks a dozen. Now this was only about five a years dollar ago. Dollar each, dollar each. So he goes beautiful. I'm going to spend sixty bucks and buy five dozen oysters, and just go and shuck them, and beautiful, Mate, beautiful. So he goes and buys five dozen, goes back to where he was camping, and has all sixty in one hit. 60 oysters 60 in one oysters. go. He loves them. Like, loves them, loves them. Oh, my God. Anyway, he wakes up in the morning and he started to swell. And his lips started to go and then he started getting these bumps above his eyes. <laughs> anyway, they take him to hospital. <laughs> yes. He's OD'd, on, he's OD'd on oysters and now he's officially allergic to shellfish. So like lead, like a lead like, like, like a mercury type yeah, thing. Yeah. He's now allergic. He can never have another oyster again. So something has switched on in his yep. nervous centre. Uh, yep, that now he that cannot have it you, ever again. You have OD'd. Yep. And, and he, I won't let you put another bit of shellfish through your he's, lips. He's now has to give up his most sacred thing. Wow. Which is oysters. Bloody hell. And I've lost out on twisties. Poor old slats. Yeah, ever, ever happened to you? What, OD'd on something? Yeah. No. You never got to a point where you've just gone, gee, I've had too much of that? No. Never. Really? I should try and do it to, with chocolate. What about you, Dan? Because I've yeah. got a weakness oh, for Oh, it's happened to you as well. Yeah, well not with twisties. When I was, when I was a kid, yeah. uh, I mum used to have the lollies up in the top of the pantry, right? Yeah. Out of, out of reach of the kids. Yeah. Clever. Clever mum. Uh, very clever. <laughs> and uh, and I discovered uh, this pack of oval teenies there. All right. right. Remember oval teenies? Yeah, yeah, teeny, teeny, yeah. We are the itty bitty teeny mini choppy molded oval teenies. Crunch. Mm, crunch, 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 crunch. Mm, crunch, crunch, crunch. Mm, I remember I was like seven years old. I ate the whole pack. Oh, and I was sick as a dog. <laughs> have not eaten an oval teeny since. <laughs> Well, you probably can't find them. I mean, it's not as big as Twisties. I get that. Oh no, no, oval teenies were—they were itsy bitsy, teeny weeny, chocky coated oval teenies. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, um, well, what I'm about to ask for has never been asked for before in the history of broadcast. Okay. Right. We want your OD story. Yes. <laughs> we, yeah. we want it. We want you to. We want you to get in touch with our socials. We don't, we don't want. And we don't tell want us life how you've OD'd on something. 
Well, I did tell you the Are story. Are we allowed to do that? Well, I, I, yeah, we, 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 want, fun, fun we, we want yeah. happy stories. A fun OD. Well, I did have one other one, which oh, I told you about many years ago. Now, remember I got raced to hospital? Oh, what for? I've forgotten. <laughs> tell, tell me. Smarties. Yes, right. <laughs> oh, no way. I did. I shoved a packet of Smarties <laughs> up my nose. <laughs> As a two-year-old, up my nose, and I kept pushing them up. I had Smarties coming out of my eyes. Like Smarties in his sinuses. Had, they had to go up there and they had to suck out oh. my nose because I had a packet of Smarties up my nose. I remember mum saying to me, darling, you got to put them in your mouth. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm thinking, you look back at life and you go, why would oh. you shove a packet of Smarties up your nose, you idiot? Hey, I have noticed, I have noticed uh, in our feedback, which we're going to do a little bit later oh, in the yeah, program, yeah, yeah. Um, that uh, you mentioned the scented by carb soda oh, yeah. business oh. idea. I've had a couple of um, I've had a couple of people and now mention this, one's good this, this one might work. It, it gets stains out of your clothes, but you're saying scented so that leave it leave it, a nice it, it smells nice and fresh. Absolutely. As well. So just have, say, you gone, have you gone any further with this? Well, so so the carpet, right? So say the carpet yeah. gets wet, you put down your boy card soda, it's good. And yeah. just gets rid of the smell. It smells but like imagine lemon. you put down a bit of lavender or a bit of vanilla Man, or a bit of co- an coconut. Um, we did have one come through from Al, and he says, what about a scent that smells like the beach? Would that be a goer? Well, for me it wouldn't be, because I, every time I think of the beach, I think of seaweed and it smells a bit yucky. Yeah, but, right. it's disgusting. but a lot of people do love this smell of seawater and sand and all that know, sort of stuff. I don't know how we can help those people. It doesn't what, smell what that about, good. What about the smell of freshly cut grass? Oh, it's good. Yeah, that well, would be good. Not on my carpet. <laughs> no, 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 I think the, the smell of no, freshly no, cut but grass if you should be out, an outdoor imagine smell Imagine you walked only. outside into the, say you walked outside in the pergola area and a bird had just pooped on the ground, you wipe it up, you, and you know how they leave that yes. really, and you put a bike upside down and you put down a bit of scented grass. Yeah. That would be lovely. Yeah, I think. absolutely. Business ideas. You got another one? I had another one. See, I, I, like this. Now, I love this. Now, this one, Mike, this one, this one has already been proven, but I, I want to get in on it. Have you tweaked it at all or is it just... No, I'm just thinking about it at the moment because I'm just watching and I'm realising there are a lot of people making a lot of money off this idea. In in all seriousness, some of your business ideas are really, really... Like that car horn one, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. You've got some some good... I think that's accurate. So this one is OnlyFans, all right? So we all know about... (laughs) What are you talking about? (laughs) What? What's the matter? Hang on. You talk, this is like the celebrity uh, uh, website where yeah. they get half nude and oh my God. Yeah, okay. they do other stuff. So, so I'm, not, I'm not suggesting we do nude, right? Thank, Thank you. God, yeah, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. For but I've got pretty good feet. <laughs> oh, come on. Have you, give me a look. I've got good feet. Give me a look. Well, we know they don't smell. We know that. They're good feet. Actually, they not are bad feet. very... That's a very handsome give foot. Give me a look. That's a very handsome foot. Yeah, that's pretty good. I don't have great hands... No, they're all over the place. Spaghetti but, I, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking, right? Just say it's the Melbourne Footy Club. I hang. I'm still trying to get the OnlyFans and your feet trying to match up. You know, here. there's a I foot finish out there in world in world land, right? There's a big foot finish. All right, but imagine foot finish <laughs> with sports people. So just say they were wearing Melbourne socks, right? So they're or. Certain but you've got to be able to see the foot, I imagine. You do the foot, but you foot just finish. You, you cut the foot out. So, oh, you, you, so right. you just see, you just see you the see bit up the on the sock. Yeah, they just see, see the stock. <laughs> it's like a socket. Right. But it could be Collingwood. It could be the Sydney Swans. Melbourne Storm. Could be anyone. Could see Munster's feet. It could see Munster's feet. And and they wouldn't, the people wouldn't necessarily know that they are Munster's feet, but it's someone from the Melbourne Storm. Right. Can you imagine how much money you'd make for all those people that want foot fetishes? <laughs> how, how big is this foot fetish thing that you speak I of? I reckon it's about a billion a year. A billion dollar a year Across industry. Across the world, it'd be a billion a year. Are you talking like sports people's feet or just random feet with socks I, on? I reckon sports people's feet. So fa- like famous sports people. Yeah. So Daily Jerry Evans' feet. Yep. In a manly yep. so, sock. So let me get this straight. If there is a billion and, and dollar... And it could be hands too. could be hands, but it wouldn't be mine. If there but is, Daily Cherry ha- might have beautiful hands. Mm. If there is a billion dollar foot fetish industry yep. out there, you just want your fair share. Just want a bit of... I just want a slice of the pie. Well, that's not silly. No, the, it is. And, and, no. <laughs> no. No. He only has to get 1% of a billion okay. dollars. All right, I'll give you one. What about if it was... 10, that's 10 mil. What about if it was Dustin Martin's feet and you could just see the bottom of the tattoos and you knew it was his, his feet? He's not giving away anything other than his feet. Right, what's the question? I, I, reckon, what? he's, I reckon he's 30 grand a week in there for easily. Oh. 
for Dusty. Dan, you're not a mathematician. Just do the maths. Okay. If he gets 1% of, of billion. the billion-dollar industry that is foot fetish, so that's he gets $10 right. million. Dollars. Me, oh, it's $10 million. $10 million. Yeah. That's $10 million. That's 10 million. Yeah. That's 10 million. It's a lot of money. Just did, say, just say. Did you go past year eleven? Did you at school? So, so this is what. So, th- this <laughs> house is turning on me all of a sudden. <laughs> this could be hands. It could be people have ear fetishes. That's you true. don't have to show all the night, all the dirty, dirty parts of it. I've got it. Go on. If you get ten million bucks from that, you can take a million of that <laughs> and give it to him <laughs> to reopen up the Fantails machine. That's right. Oh yes, no, <laughs> that's right. The, I'll send it to Grandpa. It's a win-win. We will get a new machine. Mm. Yeah, we'll get a new machine. Unbelievable. Uh, so that's, that's my idea. I, look, I, I think it's got legs. But I think it could work. I'll put this to you again. There was a girl on MAPS. Yeah. Who is now on OnlyFans. I've on OnlyFans, she's earning $30,000 a week. Yeah, that's right. News.com's amazing for that stuff. $30,000 a week. It's all the time. There's another girl uh, that I saw, I think she was from MAPS or from another show. She was earning 100 grand a week. On OnlyFans. On OnlyFans. There's a lot of desperate And she's local. Like she, imagine we go worldwide with this. Yeah. Imagine we got Peyton Manning's feet. That's what I'm saying. You only need 1% of you got the billion dollar by trying. foot fetish industry. Yeah, I'm, I'm, and ears and hands. When you, are, when you put this down on paper, it's not as stupid as it seems. Mate, I don't have stupid ideas. These are legitimate <laughs> business ideas that they've got legs. Imagine we mix the baking soda with the feet. You'd have nice smelling feet. Now, now it goes now, to new levels. Now, <laughs> now and you're throwing talking. some twisties. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, that's just another idea. Right, if you want to get involved with this business idea that is getting into the foot fetish industry somehow, now even uh, get in, in touch with us on our socials <laughs> or even OnlyFans. <laughs> get in touch, and if you can make this a reality. We're in. If you ask people to send photos of their feet in, we no, can't. No, no, no. I've got, got, got another need, name, need, name for it. I've got need. another name for it too. What is it? I don't want it to be only fans. What do you want? I want it to be lonely fans. Lonely fans. Lonely fans. Just for foot fetish. Foot fetish, ear fetish, and hand fetish. So, like, if 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 you are listening, and you can make this happen, please get in touch. With our socials. <laughs> Lonely fans. Yeah, I don't mind it. I do I think this might be a new low on the podcast. Uh, Dan, we've got a stack of uh, uh, feedback, Not haven't heaps. we? And heaps. Is it all positive this week? No. Of course it is. We'll get to it in a tick. You're having a couple of beers with a couple of blokes. This is Ox and Marco. And when you get a sec, we'd love you to subscribe and rate the podcast. I'm very excited uh, being here at the Emerald Hotel. To, mm. to one, to see your silver side when it comes out. Yep. Two, to eat my steak. Three, to watch you have another great northern because the pots here are yeah, sensational. Really Absolutely sensational. We've got a couple of callers to get to. One of them is claiming that we have aliens in northern Queensland. Well, he's and ob- he's got proof. He's obviously drunk. Um, <laughs> no, he, he, you never know. Can I just... We may well have aliens... Up there in Port Douglas. Can I just make a quick observation? Go on. Uh, you don't have to wait for a beer here, which is good. Yeah, you just walk up good. and you get served. And the other observation I'd like to make is I went into Vic Rhodes the other day. And Vic Rhodes, for anybody who's ever been to Vic Rhodes, can be an absolute nightmare. Yeah, that's right. Queensland equivalent, New South Wales equivalent, they'd all be the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, so Vic Rhodes or you can go to New South Wales Rhodes or Queensland Rhodes or SA Rhodes. Going in there for a licence renewal or number plates or mm. blah, 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 can be a nightmare. It can be. It's what? also a very good cross-section uh, of society. You actually see... <laughs> yes, you do. Yes. You actually see... You see the Nuffy P platers and L platers. all made up of. Yep. You see the truck driver walk yep. in there, he's just done yep. his thing. You see someone going in there for a, um, yep. one of those breatho machines in their car because yep. he's been caught driving over the limit. Anyway, it's normally an hour wait. You get in there and you can wait an hour easily to be served. What were you doing in there? Well, my son's number plate got stolen from outside the house. God, a lot of stuff happens to you. <laughs> it's just incredible. No, it happens to my son. Okay. All right. So he's had it stolen. Get out, So I have to go into Vic Roads to get a new number plate ordered. Now, you can do two things. You know, the order, the, the same, you only had the front one stolen. Mm-hmm. So you order number plates are the same as the back, or they just get, which is 200 bucks because yeah. they've got to go remake it. They've got to get the 
prisoners to do it down at Barwon, or <coughs> they, they um, just give you a new set of number plates, right. which is 39 bucks, which I did. Check. I was in and out in four minutes. You walk in there, there's a bloke waiting there. He says, what are you after? I said, new number plates, excuse me, a number, blah, blah, blah. I walk in there, number gets caught out. Hey, me, 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 go up there. Done. So Vic Rhodes. Said that's impossible. Congratulations on getting, you know, your stuff done. Have you got a deal with them? No. But I want one. <laughs> no, I don't want. I don't want to deal. I don't want to deal with Vic Rhodes. I just that's an observation because I've had horrible experiences with Vic Rhodes in the past, but they've got this shit together. Well, it's the first time I've ever heard positive speak about Vic Rhodes. Yeah, well done. Or their centre. And I went to Vic Rhodes in Geelong. Or the people that so, get in there. I don't know if that's normal, but no, uh, my experience with Vic Rhodes has so, been a good one. Why would people steal one number player? I wonder what the purpose of that is. I reckon because the other one had one screw half off the back one. I reckon they got interrupted. Ah. They got interrupted. But what are they going to use them for? Oh, it's not like they can... Stolen, Stolen cars. cars. Oh, yeah. They'll go and do a burg. Yeah, I okay. They grow up. Mate. Oh, see, Have see. you ever not been a thief? <laughs> Mate. <laughs> He's Seriously. grown up with a silver spoon. Mate, he grew up in up Oakley. His bum. He grew up he in does. Oakley. The, the tough streets of Oakley. I grew up in Sunbury. There were if no you weren't stealing plate there, time. There's if, no crime in Wollongong. There's no if, crime in Wollongong. If you hadn't stolen a plate before grade three, you hadn't you hadn't grown up. Hadn't been <laughs> initiated. Wake up. Put it in my place. Jeez. She whiz. Okay. Have Want we some got feedback? Yes, please. Yep. There's some good stuff here, and it's, we're still getting quite a bit of feedback coming in on um, on your pumping up uh, Collingwood fans uh, a couple of weeks ago. Well, when you talk about loyalty, when you talk about fanaticism. Fanaticism? Is that the word? I think it is, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. a word. Yeah, when you're a fanatic, yep. um, Collingwood are at the top of the tree. Yeah. Like, they turn up to games. Their mm. socioeconomical yep. position in is probably not the, you know, they're not affluent, yep. a lot of them. No. Some are, but no. but it, they turn up. Yeah, they do. Uh, and they would rather spend 100 bucks on going to the footy yep. than 100 bucks, you know, going out to dinner. And what we collectively steal all goes into one big pot yeah. and we share it, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> that's, that's what it does. That's what it does. <laughs> so uh, Paul George has written in and said, the sad thing about this is... Paul George? Oh, Paul George. Gee, really? Okay. Paul George. Good basketball. Great it? basketball. Yeah. PG. Uh, Paul George has said, the sad thing about this is that Ox is on the money. They go to the footy through thick and thin. Yep. Which is what you're saying. Yep. Well done. Tick. Mick Boom. Wright has said, Ox, you need some medical attention. Yeah. Um, I know that. And, and quite accurate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Spot on. Uh, Kenny Johnson has said... KJ. Uh, uh, KJ has said, uh, you know what, I like Schwartz now. Really? Yeah. Good calling with man, Schwartz. Kenny. This it one... It sounded like it didn't spell it right. How do you spell it? <laughs> he no, he, he spelled it, spell it Swartz. Yeah, S-W-A-R-T-Z. He the C-H. Yeah. And put a T in there. Do you have to spell your name often? Hey, hey, uh, yeah, hey I do. he's a Collingwood supporter. <laughs> I know. What do you expect? Mate, at least you got the first letter right. <laughs> and and this comment, uh, this is a ripper. This is from Richard Ryan. Love the ox. Marco, not so much. Piss Ooh. off, Richard. You dick. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, Marco, Marco takes feedback really well, especially the positive feedback. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, think, I think Richard might be onto something there. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, you guys were talking about first world pro- You had that idea we could have a segment, first world problems. Yes. Uh, maybe yeah, you said yeah, that, yeah. Ox. Yeah. Uh, and we've got a, uh, a message here from Hot.01, country golfer. Hot.01. Hot dot yeah, hilarious. What a great golf ball the Hot Dot was. That's the ball I started using when I first started playing. Uh, and then they went to a Hot Dot Plus. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> that wasn't much and then, good. And then they had the DDH. Whatever happened to the DDH? The dodecahedron. Don't but, know. But then the golf ball changed when they brought out the Strata. That was the, the game changer. Strata, that was the first non-rubber band golf ball. Yep, and yeah. it was a Ballada style too. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, Hot put dot. that in the stiff shit book. <laughs> <laughs> Hot Dot 01 has said, lads, this is a first world problem. Lads, I can't watch the footy on standard HD anymore. It has to be ultra 4K HD on Foxtel. You might as well be watching in black and white if it's standard HD. Hey, it's a good thing he brings up here about the 4K. Yeah. Because it is a beautiful picture. Yes. But the 4K symbol in the top right-hand it, corner it, takes up half the TV screen. It's too big. So Lee Carlson, who is the boss of Fox Footy, do fit. yourself a favour, my friend. Well, we understand it's in 4K, but don't make the 4K symbol bigger than the football game itself. Correct weight. Gee whiz. Carlson, he gets so much wrong at Fox Footy. He's got some problems. A lot of problems. <laughs> but Sarah Jones, on the other hand. Well, that's his wife. Doing great work. Doing a fantastic job. Thank God job. one person in the family is doing their job <laughs> properly. Do you know, that, that reminds me too of a potential civil selfishness. I want your view on this. The coronation of Charles. Yes. yes. When that was on, my wife wanted to watch it. We've got two TVs, a big high-def TV yeah. and a little small one in the front room. Yeah. I wanted to watch the footy. 
she took the big TV. Of course she did. To watch the coronation. I was on the little one watching the footy. You know what that's called? Civil selfishness. You know what it's called? What? Marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Marriage. It's called being a smart bloke and taking your medicine. Yeah. Because if you want a happy life. Affection. Affection. You want your clothes washed. Peace and quiet. Uh, <laughs> and you want, you want to be able to hold hands. You've just got to do what you're told. Yeah. Anyway, yep, yep. pass the beer nuts. <laughs> uh, more feedback. Actually, this is a question for you guys. This is from Tim McCullum. Now, Tim has written in in response to a masterclass on the Talk Birdie to Me podcast. A couple of... Bloody uh, good uh, podcast, that one. That's a great podcast. A few weeks ago where Nico Hearn filmed a masterclass uh, and he, at the time, was slightly shaved in a different way. Would he have a mustaka or did he have a... No, he didn't have the moustache. He just had the beard. So here's Tim's question. Is Nick O'Hearn sporting a moustache-less beard? Can you be friends with someone running with that ox and Marco? It's an interesting question. Mm. I think he wasn't you... going to an Abraham Lincoln sort of dress-up party, was he, by any chance? I think so. I'm Is not Nick sure. O'Hearn Muslim? No, he's not. Don't believe so. Mm. No, he's not. No, I don't think you can do that. Well, that's going to be awkward for the, the golf podcast, Marco. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I'll be right. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I don't no, know. He's a good fella. I'm sure it was an accident. What, he, he woke yes. up and he shaved his moustache by accident? He slept, <laughs> he slept <laughs> in the bathroom and well, shaved take, off his top lip. You take the whole lot off, Nick. Come Last on. bit of feedback here from David Newell. I'm currently in Italy on a bus tour with the missus and I downloaded a bunch of episodes to kill time on the bus. As Not to kill time. He didn't say that. To be entertained. We're not killing time. To, to be entertained and right. thoroughly enjoy it. Wake up, oh, oh, sorry. Let me rewrite David's uh, <laughs> message here. <laughs> okay. uh, download a bunch of episodes to be highly entertained. <laughs> Thank you. More like it. While on the bus. As we're driving through Tuscany, which, by the way, is a beautiful part of the world, I'm laughing my ass off and everyone's looking at me like I'm oh, mad. Good Love man. it. Thank there you, David. That's good. David you're enjoying Newell. yourself. That's great. Wouldn't you like to be in Tuscany right now? Hey, how many people are in Europe at the moment Stacks. from Australia? Stacks. Too it's many. It's like a huge exodus. Too many. Massive. I've got so many mates in Europe that what have about, just jetted off. Work colleagues, it's ridiculous how Which many is, work colleagues we've got overseas. That's a blessing. Uh, so that's the feedback, boys. That's what we've got. Perfect. Nice. And if you've got any more feedback, Frox, uh, get in touch with our oh, socials. What about you? You caught one little back ender <laughs> and you go to water. Like, seriously. He's a you, real dick. So, so that's feed, three times no, now. So, so feedback, feedback isn't about – you need to change your feedback to praise. You love praise. But as soon as someone gets stuck into you, I thought golfers had thick skin. No, we don't. In fact, when it comes to sporting power, I think golfers <laughs> have the thinnest of all skins. Yeah, you're right. Robert Allenby. We do. Remember he was going to wear oh, the earmuffs because yeah. he couldn't handle yeah, people a... yelling at him? Yep. No, we're very selfish individuals. Thank God Brooks Kepler came along and he, he, can, actually, <laughs> yeah. he can actually take a bit. He can take a bit. Thank goodness for that. Please. There, there, there was one other bit of feedback we didn't uh, read, only because I think it's embarrassing. Okay. Uh, and it's from a bloke who... Agrees with you on the whole alien thing. That Good, they, let's they get him on. Us. Is he, is he giving well, what's his name? Well, I wasn't going to. It's like it's a bit. No, I what's his get, name? I want to get this bloke on. His name's Bruce. It's not Bruce Allen, is it? No. Get, let's talk to Brucey. <laughs> let's give him a call. We're going to speak to Bruce. Bruce speaking. Okay, and Bruce, what do you do? Mate, I do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an expert at doing nothing. I sit there at the moment. I'm transporting a boat up the east coast of Australia. Are you uh, sailing the boat or are you putting it on a truck? No, 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 we're sailing it, mate. Right. Oh, Bruce, the cruiser. Bugger. He just cruises. All right. Cruisy, right. cruisy, Bruce. So, Bruce, you've sent us in some feedback. Uh, I'm a non-believer in aliens. Marco oh, I'm is, a big believer. Yeah. Marco's a big believer. You, where, where do you sit on this? Mate, I'm huge on it. Why? We, we, I, I live in far north Queensland, yeah. and we we hear, and that, you know, like if you're going to be an alien, you're not going to drop into Swanson Street or Bridge Road, Richmond, are you? <laughs> you're going to find a spot which is <laughs> we, which is a little bit, you know, like we we don't we don't make a big thing of it. And in far north Queensland, there's a lot of things fly around without lights on at night. Whoa. Give us an example. Well, yeah, we'll go. We'll go into town. We we live in a town of three thousand people. Yeah. And people will go. Did you hear that stuff last night? And you go. It wasn't helicopter. Uh, you know, the, uh, could have been a plane. You know, some of these planes bring in commercial quantities of uh, baking. 
soda or powder from uh, <laughs> <laughs> from New Guinea, scented, and they all, they're not all successful. Lavender scented <laughs> baking soda. If so, you don't mind. so you're you're yeah. going on noise rather than visual. Well, it's there's just stuff that happens, and then you see the people that come out of the forests up here. Oh, they, yeah. they are they are a different breed. When, you, when you're talking about the noise, Bruce, can you kind of give us a demonstration of what it sounds like? Because I'm, I <laughs> I know what planes sound like. I don't know what UFOs sound like. It's it's more your hum. It's, yeah. it's your hum. It's not a propeller sound. That's what it's I It's your hum. You know, and and if I was if I was probably about four or five beers deep, I'd give you a give you a, a rendition of it. But it is your hum. It's a it's a like a what would you. Oh, it's not exactly like that. A bit, oh. bit more lurch in it. Bruce, do you, um, Bruce, do you smoke hooch? <laughs> <laughs> in all seriousness, do you or do you do LSD or any of that sort of stuff? No, no, no I'm your baking soda sort of guy. All right, all right. <laughs> so you've never seen it. You've never seen an alien. You've seen some weird people come out of the bush. I've seen lights. I've seen, I've, you hear the hum, you see the lights. They sit there and they disappear. All right. Yeah, well, that's good enough for me. Like... <laughs> <laughs> that is the it's weakest. Like, it's, like ba- it's like baking a cake. You need a few elements to bake the cake. Yeah, you need an oven as well. Good on you, Bruce. <laughs> Thanks, for, mate. Thanks for joining us on the program. You're we appreciate it. See you, boys. There you go. I'll be honest with you. Right then and there. Yeah, you're a believer. That is the worst, <laughs> the worst description of uh, a sighting of a UFO or aliens ever. See, when he talks about a lurching, humming sound, yeah, it, could be the, it sounds very believable You know what that is? That's the power yeah. lines. That's yeah. the power lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when Bruce messaged, I thought he was joking around, but he's, I think he's serious. No, he, he's not serious. Of course he's serious, He's mate. talking about lights and people coming out of the forest. I think he's serious. Anti-gravity automobile. He didn't say that. That's what he means. <laughs> That's what he meant. That's what so, happens. So you can actually decipher what he's saying. Yes, I can. You alien people are clever. When you, are you mess, tell- when you mess with gravity, I've been told it does make what that do you mean you mess with gravity? lurching, humming sound. That's that. That's how aliens get around, mate. Anti gravity. Well, if, if, Transportation. If, you, if you know so much about this, why haven't we invented <laughs> an alien ship? Because <laughs> our scientists can't. What do you call it? Reverse engineer what they've found. Over there in New Mexico. What did they find over there? You know what they found. They found nothing. They found a crash. They found contraband. That's they, it. They, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a balloon. Wasn't it? No. It wasn't a weather balloon. All right. Can we get this show back on track? Enough, enough of the aliens. What do you got for me? Let's move away from aliens, full stop, because I think when we're talking aliens, there's no winner. Until it's actually proven, <laughs> no one can win. Is that fair? No, that's fair, and I'm happy not to speak of aliens again until someone's been taken right. to our leader. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> to our leader. Fair to go. Um, a bit of an update for you. Please. Wayne Carey will be speaking to us in the next uh, in next at the next episode Fantastic. or one after. Fantastic! You know what he's about to go undergo? He's about to undergo a shoulder replacement. Oh my god! Now think about that. There's only ever been three of them in Australia. Yeah, ever. He's going to be number four. I've heard a rumor about Duck. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I've heard some as well. Yeah, no, but this one, this one, well, I, well, I'll, I'll happily say. Well, his podcast is called "The Truth Hurts." Yeah, I'm looking forward so, to so getting he, the duck on, and well, maybe we'll ask, we even go across. We'll ask him about this rumor because he, the truth, yeah, he, he tells the truth. Oh, can I tell on you what this, it is? on his podcast? Can I can I pre-rumor this rumor? Yeah, so of course. People know, and then we'll get yeah. him on and ask him. Yep. You know how he played with all his shoulders strapped up? Yeah. He didn't really have any shoulder issues. But he was making so much money on the tape that he just taped his shoulders up. Really? That's what I've heard. He was making more money taping his shoulders than what the tape was actually helping a dodgy shoulder. I call bullshit. Well, we'll get the duck on and we'll find out. 
Well, he's having a shoulder replacement. Mate, alas the plast, <laughs> we're tipping. paying him a bomb. Well, I'm tipping if he's having a shoulder replacement. What, well, do you think he's doing a shoulder replacement because he's going to make some cash? I reckon the alas the plast on that shoulder caused so much harm <laughs> <laughs> that he ended up <laughs> <laughs> to get it because it just oh. was so taxing getting it off his shoulder. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. I, now I know why you believe I'm in aliens. You, now I'm I know why you. I'm telling you, this is. I think it's I think it's right. You're into conspiracy theories. I think it's right. You are a conspiracy theorist. Six figures from a last of blast. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I'm telling you the oh. truth, mate. Hey, I'm sorry, I've heard a rumour too that you might be able to clear up. I've heard a rumour that some high level rugby league and AFL players or rugby union players will, will bandage if they have if they come over for an injury with their arm, they'll bandage the other arm. Yes, True. True. So that, what mongrels don't whack it? No, because they used to target it. Yeah. So you'd, you'd tape up your left arm and they'd target, you know, you'd, you'd get Craig Kelly, for example, yeah. target your left arm. Ned wasn't that clever, so they go the right arm <laughs> and the way you go, well, he's Collingwood. So you, 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 go, you go the right arm. He's so, the CEO of Collingwood, thanks very much. Is he? Yeah, he's the new CEO. When? When did that happen? Have you been following it lately? <laughs> no. I'm, I'm too, Start too happy, the year. I'm too happy with their supporters. Yeah, I don't okay. go into the club land. Okay. Who was the nastiest bloke you played against? Nastiest? Yeah, yeah nasty. Um, oh, Steve Wallace was pretty nasty from the Bulldogs. What did he do? Just dirty. Really? Fingernails Actually, into your skin? I think I played with the dirtiest players. Andy Goodwin. Dirty. <laughs> what did he, mate, he was scared. People didn't like playing no, against him. and they still don't. They don't even like walking down the street next to him. <laughs> Like Andy Goodwin, <laughs> Steve O'Dwyer, Straubs. Straubs. He used to belt the living suitcases out yeah, of Jimmy's time. Good looking rooster. Too. Good looking rooster. Yeah, who else? Very, very good looking rooster. Um, so that were the two of them. Oh, no. Rod Grinter. Gary Lyons, oh, mate. That's um, it. Gary, uh, Gary Lyon and everybody else who agree with this, Rod Grinter had the number one hip and shoulder in the game. He put Chris Mew to sleep. In fact, in my second ever game of AFL, yeah. it was VFL back then, 1991 yeah. round two, we played Fitzroy. Yeah. Um, it was at Princess Park. He played in the twos beforehand. He hit a kid in the twos who never played again. Never, ever. Ever, never ever played footy again. He hit him that hard. Oh my he he God. just had this ability of lining blokes up. Yeah, and he did did it unfairly occasionally. Like Terry Wallace, the one with, the one with Terry Wallace wasn't great. Oh, I thought Terry was dead. Yeah, well, so did Terry. Terry thought he was dead. Terry thought he died. Did he? Yep. He thought he was in did massive he, trouble. Was he floating up towards a well, white light? Test? Well, he, he had to put his teeth back in, which he couldn't do because <laughs> his jaw was hanging out the other side of his head. <laughs> but that, that was ugly because he got charged, and that wasn't a good one. But he had this ability back then. You could you could hit blokes front and square if you got them clean, and that's what he did. Yeah, we could actually. We've been talking about reverse engineering a bit on today's program. We should reverse engineer big hits, but not go to the guy who did the hitting. The guys we should who got go hit. to the guy who got hit. So we need to speak to Brennan Crummel, who got hit by Byron Pickett. Yes. Who was the bloke who got hit by Plugger's elbow? Peter Caven. Peter, he had his head caved in. Peter, Peter caved in. So, yeah. uh, well, this, this is actually, that I wouldn't mind. Be, we should speak to Peter we, Caven. We should speak to Peter Caven. We should speak to Terry Wallace. We what, should speak to... What about Brad Sewell? Sully. Sully got cleaned up by Matty Lloyd. Matty Lloyd. What was it Alistair Lynch who got... Uh, Darryl no, Wakeland. Lynch, he was trying to belt <laughs> Daryl Wakeland. Daryl Wakeland. No, Shane Wakeland. Shane Wakeland. Shane Wakeland. No. Shane Wakeland. No, Ned, gonna... Missed 15 times. They threw, uh, they threw 111 punches, not one landed. <laughs> what about Brent Staker? <laughs> oh, Absolutely. Barry, Barry Hall. Yeah, we certainty. Can... We've got to get him on. What about, um, what about Cameron Mooney? <laughs> Moondog. Oh, he just got cleaned up in the boxing ring. <laughs> yeah, that's We've got to get Moondog all, on. We'll get him on. See, this is good. This is, no, one, no one looks at stuff like this. We could, call, we could call this the candle section. The our candle. Can, our candle topic. Our candlelight. <laughs> He's the candlelight podcast. Hang on. Out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. This started with you giving an update on the duck, though. So just to wrap that up, duck, when's he on? Uh, it'll either be next week or the week after. He's having a shoulder replacement. So if he's he's on anti-inflammatories at the moment and painkillers yeah. uh, for his shoulder. <laughs> oh, it's even so, better. So, so we've just got to wait for him to... So to be right to be able to we'll talk. Have to give a it's a shoulder replacement, which means they cut, ready. they cut off his humerus and they cut off putting yeah, your ball in socket. It's a big it's, operation. It's ridiculous what they are capable of. Crazy. Yeah. We've got to get to the joke. Let's spin the wheel. All right, there we go. It's spinning and it's landed on... An alien joke. Oh, you're joking. Oh, Dan, when did that go up on the board? Uh, I think a couple of weeks ago. That's incredible. Well, I saw yeah. this one on a bonbon not so long ago. Did you? Yeah. Righto. Why are aliens especially interested in abducting cows? 
I don't know. Because they can jump over the moon. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm not going to laugh. That is come terrible. On. That is terrible. You need to... Have uh, you got I'm something else? Accept that. Have you got something I'm else? I'm not going to accept that one. Um, come on. I don't care what it is. Uh, what do aliens spread on their toast? I don't know. Space Jam. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah, that's much better. <laughs> that makes me smile. That makes me smile. All right, buddy. Good to see you. Keep on going thinking these business ideas. Only One of them's going to take hold I'm, gonna get, I'm actually going to get a pedicure. Hey? Get those toes looking really, really <laughs> sharp. Really sharp. <laughs> see you next week. Uh, great show, boys, and thanks to the Emerald Hotel for the beers and hospitality today. Very nice and a great place for a drop and a feed. Uh, also thanks to Bruce from North Queensland who uh, called up with his <clears throat> alien stories. I don't know. I don't know about that. Marco's on board. Ox, not so much. And don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast. That way you will never miss an episode and share the episodes with your friends as well. The more the better. That'd be great. Couple of blokes, couple of beers. Executive producer is Dan Bradley at Kaizen Media. Sound design, Daryl Misson at loudzebra.com. See you next week.